The action is live as we near the 300 mile mark of the 20th annual Daytona 500, the stock car racing classic of American motor racing. The leader, he's the man who has won the NASCAR championship for the past two years and has won this race twice. Cale Yarborough, Timmonsville, South Carolina. In second place, an immense man, six feet five inches tall, Buddy Baker, who has never won the race. And behind him, number 15, Bobby Allison, another veteran who at age 41 has never won the race. But look now as Buddy Baker tries to take the lead from Cale Yarborough, and he's done it. Buddy Baker has been coming here since the early 1960s. His father, Buck Baker, came here before him. Neither one of them ever managed to win the great classic. With just about 200 miles to go, Buddy has the bit in his teeth. He's always been known as one of the greatest chargers in the sport of automobile racing. Can he hang on? Well, his history is, but very often he cannot. Last year, for example, although he won more than $205,000, he did not win a single automobile race. However, it is Baker in the lead, Carol Yarbrough second, and Bobby Allison third. Coming to you live from the Daytona International Speedway. Live from the Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida, ABC Sports presents the 20th annual Daytona 500, the world's richest and most prestigious stock car race. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Goodyear, developers of such tire innovations as the new all-season Tiempo radial with a special tread design for all kinds of weather, by First National City Traveler's Checks with over 45,000 pre-authorized refund locations worldwide, and the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Well, I'm Jim McKay reporting to you live from Daytona International Speedway as Buddy Baker tries to stretch that lead out just a little bit. With me in the commentary booth is the three-time world champion of motor racing, Jackie Stewart. Down in the pits, as always, Chris Okonomaki, the editor of National Speed Sport News. There have been spectacular doings here. There have been things that have frightened us this afternoon. It started off calmly enough when, over the first 60 laps, they went further without a yellow flag than ever had happened in the history of the Daytona 500. For that reason, because there were no yellow flags and pit stops of that nature, they were breaking all speed records. Suddenly, there was a major incident involving three of the great names in the sport, Richard Petty, and uh, Darrell Waltrip, and David Pearson. Then, shortly after that, A.J. Foyt, the greatest single name in American racing, had his car flip underneath him, land on its roof, come back on its four wheels. He was taken to the track hospital, has now been transferred to Halifax Hospital in Daytona Beach. And even since then, there has been another spin involving three or four cars on the back stretch. This was Jerry Jolly in car number 28, Ty Scott in number 30, Jimmy Lee Capps in number 26, and one other car whose number we were not able to spot spinning wildly. Jackie, we, I couldn't see the reason for that, could you? No, it was obviously coming off of turn two, this very fast 3,000 foot fast back stretch, and they almost spun all the way down to turn three. They must have been doing 185 to 190 miles an hour when it happened, and when you spin at that speed, Jim, you go a long way. No question of that. Chris Economaki is down in the pits. I believe he has a further report of the condition of A.J. Foyt. Chris, can you hear me? Come on in if you can. Oh, I just, I've just come back from the field hospital here on the ground at the Daytona International Speedway, where A.J. Foyt, who was removed from his car and taken into the track infirmary unconscious, one arm and a shoulder being favored by the doctors, he regained consciousness in the infirmary. He was bandaged. His head was bandaged. His arm and shoulder was bandaged. He was wrapped in blankets and very tenderly placed in an ambulance oh, just a few minutes ago and taken to Halifax Hospital here in Daytona Beach. Foyt's accident in his career, the worst ones have always been in stock cars. In 65, he was hurt at Riverside in a stock car and the following year at Milwaukee. His shoulder injury may keep him out of the Indianapolis 500. Back to you, Jim. All right, Chris, we have now officially passed the 300-mile mark in this race, and the leader is Buddy Baker. We get a report from NASCAR officials that Cale Yarborough may be having engine problems. I don't know what that's based on. We'll investigate it when we come back. And we will be back in a minute. We return again live to Daytona, where the leader of the race continues to be Buddy Baker in car number 27, Cale Yarborough, the NASCAR national champion in second place in car number 11. There is the leader in the race, Buddy Baker. As we said, he's the largest driver in the NASCAR Tour, six feet five inches tall. Just behind him right now, you see Benny Parsons in car number 72, but that is not the second place car. Benny is actually two laps down in the race because of an incident that happened to him earlier, which you'll be seeing as we go along here. We're going to have to double back. Remember, almost 300 miles had gone by before we came to you live here. If you were with us earlier in some parts of the country on Superstars, however, you saw live reports on many of those incidents. We will, however, be showing them to you again. 
Buddy Baker is beginning to spread out his lead over Cale Yarbrough to a couple of hundred yards, but Benny Parsons stays attached to him, uh, using his draft to try to unlap himself of one lap. He'd still have to unlap himself again to get back into the fray. But the way things have been going this afternoon, that certainly could happen. Now, the first major incident of this day came after 60 laps of racing had gone by. As I said before, as you see, Benny Parsons looks like successfully unlapping himself of one lap. He still has another lap to go before he's in the same lap with the leaders. Uh, they had gone 60 laps of racing further th than ever had been gone before in the Daytona 500 without a caution flag, without a yellow light going out. Uh, at that point, we all were kind of lulled into a false sense of security. Uh, Richard Petty was leading the race with Darrell Waltrip second and David Pearson third. Suddenly, it appears that a tire went. Now, well, as they come out for turn four here, there's still a lap before this incident occurred, right. but you see Richard Petty's car clearly doing well. Richard Petty, who had had an accident two days before, a lot of people thought that he would not run in the 500, and yet here he is leading the the 500 mile race at this time. Behind them, Darrell Waltrip, who had won several races over the weekend, had run three races and finished second in the other. And of course, the foxy old grandfather himself, David Pearson, trying to overtake as they came on to this back stretch. He seemed to Dutch duck out there from time to time. This is videotaped earlier today, just before this accident happened. Now, Jim, they went into turn three. Everything seemed to be according to plan. Darrell Waltrip went a little bit low. Richard Petty driving smoothly in the groove. And then, just about now, Richard Petty's car slips out sideways. It starts to spin, hits the wall. The two cars behind him can't avoid the situation. They go towards the infield. Richard Petty's car, the blue and white car, hits the fence, sears up into the air with Richard Petty inside. All three cars coming in contact. It must have been some kind of mechanical happening. We do know, of course, now what did happen. But at that time, as you can see in the slow-mo gym here, the lead car, Richard Petty, the back end slides out. It looked to me like oil had dropped onto the rear tires. It seemed that it could not possibly have been a driver incident. Then, Darrell Waltrip touches them slightly, as also does David Pearson hit Waltrip. Then they smash into this wall at a speed of an excess of 180 miles an hour. Coming down and with tremendous driver control that only men of this caliber could do. Uh, they managed to get the cars to stop, not before hitting a wall, as you will see as they come down into here, but none of those drivers were injured. Uh, Petty was injured two days ago, remember, was knocked unconscious. We have a report from uh, the pits, I believe, from Chris Economaki. Okay, that three-car accident knocked out Richard Petty and David Pearson. Darrell Waltrip's car was badly battered. He brought it back to the garage. They worked on it back there. Brought it back to the pits, and they spent a lot of time working on it. He has just gone back onto the track. Richard Petty said that a left side tire was punctured and cut and sent him into the wall. Walton said he just ran into him. Pearson said he had a terrible shot. Their cars are badly wrecked, hopelessly out, but Walton back on the track in a cripple. Back to you, Jim. All right, Chris. Chris Economaki with an on-the-scene report. That's the move over flag being given there to uh, some car. Buddy Baker still the leader and by a fairly comfortable margin at this point. Carol Yarborough is second, Bobby Allison third, the only cars on the same lap. Then we have Ron Hutcherson, the teammate of the injured A.J. Foyt, and Benny Parsons two laps down. We'll be right back. Baker must now begin to have dreams of winning the Daytona 500, the career object of every member of NASCAR. He's never done it. He's been coming here since the early 60s. His father came here before him, L.Z. Wiley Baker Sr. Neither of them has ever won the race. With less than 200 miles to go, he's beginning to move out his lead a little bit over Cale Yarborough, the current NASCAR national champion. We showed you the one incident involving Richard Petty and Darrell Waltrip and David Pearson. There was another one shortly afterwards, just a couple of laps afterwards. And this involved two more great names in the sport. One of them, Benny Parsons, a former winner of the Daytona 500, the other, A.J. Foyt. Let's videotape. Now, let's take a look at that situation. Here we had Cale Yarbrough in car number 11 leading the race. Benny Parsons in car number 72 was in second place as they came through. Uh, this must be turns three and four at this point on the videotape. Behind them, car number 53 is Ron Hutcherson, the teammate of A.J. Foyt. Now, A.J. Foyt's car looks exactly like that. It's also an orange car, but that is an A.J. That's his teammate. A.J. is even out of the picture at this point. Now, here, suddenly, the tire exploding, coming apart, large bits of rubber flying. Parsons spinning down into the infield, and as he does that, A.J., right about this point, appeared to hit some debris or something and flip over into the infield. Un invisible by the, the smoke there, and there were still on Benny Parsons' car, but there was A.J., who 
flip, went onto the roof and back onto the wheels again. What do you think, Jackie, happened? I can only imagine that A.J. Foyt hit some of the debris that was on the racetrack, some of the tar that had, had exploded. And, of course, you must remember Petty already had had a puncture, but here we can see them past the start-finishing line. Then you'll see suddenly pieces of black rubber bouncing off of the racetrack. There you will see, and there they come, shattering pieces of tyre. It must have had a, a very heavy puncture to cause a blowout of this kind. The car then slews sideways. Car gets into a slide. Ron Hutchison masterfully avoids that situation as car number 72 goes into this soft infield. Now, it's been raining a lot. This is very soft. The car could easily dig in and go upside down. On the right-hand side, and there is the car of A.J. Foyt. The rescuers had come to that car. The stretcher had been brought by this time. The amazing safety of these cars, amazing. The structure inside the car is really, truly great. And there is A.J. Foyt being lifted out, still with his crash helmet on, onto the stretcher very gently. But the car was severely damaged, but he was a lucky man that it wasn't even more a physical thing. No question, without the roll cage, it would have been very serious. Now a live report on this situation from Chris Economaki. Well, Benny, Benny Parsons got back in the competition. is on the scoreboard, shown up there in fifth place. But with Freud, it's a different matter. He was removed from the track infirmary not long ago to Halifax Hospital here in Daytona Beach. An eye intravenous injection bottle was being held by an attendant as the stretcher was placed in the ambulance. It was seen that his head was bandaged, his shoulder and arm were bandaged. He is complaining of a sore shoulder. Gordon Johncock, who raced him in this last year's Indianapolis 500, was in the hospital with him and said that it looked like, as the car was upside down, Foyt's shoulder was on the deck, and that means rubbing against the track. So he, everyone seems to think that A.J. Foyt will be okay, but he's having a tough time of it right now in Halifax Hospital. Back to you, Jim. All right, we'll be waiting, Chris, for an official report as Buddy Baker, the leader in the race, came into the pits, has made his pit stop and going back out again, but that is going to make Carol Yarborough, we, you know, has to make Carol Yarborough the leader of the moment in the race. Bobby Allison also on the same lap. There is Carol Yarborough just getting by him right now. The car in front of him, 53, is Ron Hutcherson, remember, who sat on the outside of row one when the race began. Yarbrough was on the inside on the pole position. Uh, Hutcherson, the 34-year-old teammate of A.J. Foyt. There is Cale Yarbrough at age 37. Uh, many people think on his way to becoming the new king of the sport. In fact, I saw a banner coming in here today held by some of his fans that said, Cale is king, uh, me meaning instead, of course, of the traditional King Richard Petty, who is out of the going here. Carol Yarbrough started this race in the lead. He relinquished it in brief spurts to Darrell Waltrip in the first few laps. Later, dropped back to about fourth place, or to exactly fourth place when it was Petty and Waltrip and Pearson up the front. Then when they, when they went out, he took the lead again. Since then, with yellow flags and various things, he dropped back to second or third place. Now is in first place again. Jackie, it's always wild at Daytona, but this seems wilder and, in a sense, more insecure than ever. Well, there's been several reasons for this. I believe there was a lot of trepidation going into this race. There are a lot of new cars. The aerodynamics of those cars were being suggested to be very difficult to handle from the driver's point of view. The tire problems that we've had, I think, are partially to do with the fact that this track has had a lot of rain. And, of course, there's been a lot of rough stuff brought onto the track. A lot of cars have been coming out of the infield onto the racetrack. It could be that you've got nails, pieces of glass, and other stuff on the racetrack, for matter that would not normally be there. So for that reason, it could be that some of the incidents that were seen have been caused by that. Cale Yarbrough uh, about to put another lap on, or at least like he looks like he might, on number 90, Dick Brooks, who's in fifth place in the race right now. That would put Dick Brooks two laps down instead of one, and it does right now. However, Yarbrough is going to have to pit very soon himself. The action is live, and we'll be back. Cale Yarbrough in car number 11, the race leader in the pits at the Daytona 500. However, by the time he comes out, he may not be the race leader. It may be Buddy Baker again. Baker already having made his pit stop under the green. We had an earlier report from NASCAR. We don't know what it was based on, but a report from the officials that Cale might be having engine problems, but they certainly didn't look at the engine when he came into the pits. Cale Yarbrough, for the last two years, the NASCAR champion, a very interesting man at age 37. Why don't we meet this fellow up close and personal? Kale, two times Grand National Champion. How has the day-to-day -day existence of Kale Yarborough changed uh, now that you're a champion twice over? Well, you know, it's uh, a lot more demand on my time, Chris. Uh, 
it's a lot of things to do, but, you know, uh, it hasn't really made any difference to me. I hope uh, the way I act and all, because it's, uh, it's part of the game. It's something I've been after for a long time, and I've done it. And as far as me changing, I, I hope I haven't, but it's, uh, I have to live a hectic schedule, yeah. What about politics? You expressed an interest in that. You were active a while back. What about now in politics? Well, right now I'm out of politics. I just built a new home over on my farm, and I moved right across the county line, so I had to resign my uh, political position. But uh, after this racing's over, then we'll take another look at it. And, you know, maybe, uh, maybe there is a future in politics for me. I don't know. I'll just have to wait and see. An introspective look at Cale Yarbrough. For the past two years, the NASCAR national champion, but now out of the lead again in the Daytona 500. Ron Hutcherson, number 53, unlapping himself from Cale Yarbrough. He must unlap himself yet from Buddy Baker, the leader. There's Dick Brooks doing the same thing. Brooks now is one lap behind Cale, but the leader, Buddy Baker, is by himself at the moment in car number 27. As I said, all 1977, he didn't win a single race, Jackie, yet still managed to win $205,000, which indicates, among other things, that he led many races for a long time. Well, he's always a very competitive man. He wasn't at all pleased with his last year, of course. He had no success, and no driver is comfortable with that. He even changed teams. He got away from the team he had been driving for, of course. And that always is somewhat of an unsettling thing. But Moore, very successful team, which he left. I think felt a little bit hurt by this, but right now he must be pretty happy in the way that his motor car is running. Looking at this race as I do now, I have to think that Kyle Yarbra is definitely having a problem with his car in one way, because it seems to me that he's got an engine problem. He's certainly not going as fast down the straight. Very interesting that the two lead cars at the moment, there's smoke coming from somebody. I can't spot that number. Somebody is having a problem. It's, uh, I think that's uh, Al Holbert, isn't it? Car number 48, yes. Al Holbert from the Road Courses of America. And there's a streak of luck because, in fact, right behind Al Holbert at that time is our leader. In fact, he was just right behind Al Holbert, our leader, and you can see him in car number 27 there, Buddy Baker. It could have been so easy for him to collide with Al Holbert at that time when Al Holbert had a mechanical. All right, it's very interesting that car number 27, Buddy Baker, and number 15, Bobby Allison, are the one-two leaders in this race right now because they started way back in 31st and 33rd positions, respectively. Why did they start way back there with very fast cars? Well, because in the 125-mile qualifying race here the other day, one of two such races, they were well up in the lead when they had an incident. There it was, 27 and 15 running together. Ironically, 15 was Buddy Baker's number last year. Now it's Bobby Allison's number. The two of them coming down in the infield. And Jackie, you remember well what happened from here as Buddy came straight up. He came straight up and collided with the wall, as you'll see, the concrete wall at the height of this 31 degree banking and just look at that scratching through there tremendous Bill Elliott just passed him by the skin of his teeth that could have been even a more difficult situation okay so the man who was involved in that spectacular accident who had to start 31st in the race is now in the lead Buddy Baker oh my goodness he wishes it was all over at this point because as I have said so many times in his long NASCAR career Buddy, a man with a very heavy foot, has led races only to see something happen in the latter stages. So it's Baker in first place, Bobby Allison second, Kerry Alvaro third. Those are the only three cars on the same lap. Now one lap down is Ron Hutcherson in car number 53. And now also only one lap down is, guess who, Benny Parsons, the man whose tire exploded in front of us going down the straightaway. So the cars which are one lap down may not be quite out of it. Let's not forget about them. But the only three in the same lap at the moment are 27 Baker, 15 Allison, and 11 Kale Yarborough. It has been some afternoon at Daytona, and there's still a ways to go. We still have 58 laps to go. We'll be right back after this commercial message. Not only that, but a word also from your local station. Here we go. We return live again to Daytona International Speedway. This is Jim McKay reporting with Jackie Stewart and Chris Economaki on the 20th annual running of the Daytona 500. It has been a spectacular afternoon. The racing has been skillful, courageous, and extremely exciting. There have been a couple of incidents which, unfortunately, eliminated a number of the major drivers in this race. Among them, Richard Petty and David Pearson and A.J. Foyt, who is in Halifax Hospital. In second place in the race at the moment is the veteran 41-year-old Bobby Allison of Hueytown, Alabama in car number 15. He is several hundred yards behind Buddy Baker at this point. Only one other car is on the same lap and that is Cale Yarborough 
in car number 11. Now, the A.J. Foyt uh, situation, Jackie, was one that certainly scared us here. We still don't know his final condition, but certainly he is in better condition than he would be without the roll cage. The car really had a lot of banging around. It must have gone off the road around 190 miles an hour. The car flipped and came down heavily. How why A.J. Foyt is not more seriously injured, I would never know. All right, well, here is the man who, at age 43, has won the Indianapolis 500 four times. He is one of only two men, not members of NASCAR, who have ever won this race, the other one being Mario Andretti. As I move along, I'm coming in front of a, a mesh effect. Now, this here is fireproof. The idea is to stop a driver's head or arms being thrown out in the case of the car rolling over. To get into the car, he has to put that down because he can't get in the doors. The doors are welded up just in case they fly open as well. The first thing you see, obviously, is this seat, which is certainly different from the normal car. It's padded to keep the driver in the seat against the high banked ovals at high speeds, the Gs that he gets, holds him in, particularly in the shoulder side here. Of course, the driver wears seat belts like every driver on the road should nowadays. He's got two shoulder straps, he's got a waist strap, and then he's got one that slips through between his legs. The reason for that? to stop something called submarining, when a driver on heavy impact can slide underneath his own seat belt and sometimes even get decapitated. That has happened. This certainly would stop that. Steering wheel, it's padded in the case of impact as well. It's got fire extinguishers on board, although the fire hazard is certainly minimized in the NASCAR by the fact that the, the tanks are sealed outside the survival cell that we're looking at right now. It's underneath the car and shouldn't get in. If a fire does occur, however, we've got two fire extinguishers independently operated by the driver or by a rescue crew who could come. They just pull the pin and the fire extinguisher goes off. Now, the roll over cage is the most important factor of all, and this has probably saved more life than anyone else. You see all of this cage in here, heavily padded again to stop the driver from coming into contact with his arms or his crash helmet to stop severe impact. But that rollover cage has certainly saved more lives than anything else I can think of in any category of racing in the world. On the windscreen as well, we should have a little look at the windscreen because here there are struts on this windscreen to stop anything heavy coming in. It's mandatory to have three, but Richard Petty, a man of safety, has four, so that he's not going to have anything come in there. There's a lot in safety in NASCAR. It's the safest type of motor racing that I know, and I would rather be in this car in an accident than any other I know. Well, I taped that particular piece some time ago, but all the things that I said in there are responsible for the fact that A.J. Foyt is not very seriously injured after an incredible accident on this front stretch here at Daytona. The car flipped, as I said, around 190 miles an hour, and that cage that was inside the, ca inside the car truly helped A.J. Foyt from serious injury. All right, we're going to have a report from the pits on A.J. Foyt from Chris Economaki. Chris? I just was over to the field hospital and talked to Dr. Carol Heron, the man who treated A.J. Foyt before he was sent to Halifax Hospital here in Daytona Beach. He said that Foyt's injuries are contusions and abrasions, and the intravenous injection bottle was a precaution in case he has a broken shoulder. Dr. Heron does not think that A.J. Foyt has a broken shoulder, but he's undergoing x-rays in the hospital now. He expects it to be held overnight, and if there are no bones broken, we should be released tomorrow. Back to you, Jim. All right, Chris, that's certainly the most optimistic report we've had on A.J. Foyt, and good news to everybody here at Daytona and around the country. The leader is still Buddy Baker in car number 27. However, the second-place car of Bobby Allison has just pitted under the green. That's going to drop him back a good ways, and I would believe, although we can't see as yet whether he's managed it, that Cale Yarborough will move into second place. Only three cars, remember, on the same lap. We have passed the 370-mile mark of the 500-mile race. We passed lap 151, 49 laps to go, and still Buddy Baker in no apparent trouble. Now, the thing that Buddy Baker probably has less experience in than anything else, I think, Jackie, is cooling it, being way ahead in a race and being able just to try to drive, not as slow, but certainly a cautious and intelligent race. He's usually had to try to charge, to pass somebody else. Well, I think your word cautious there is the main thing. Buddy Baker, the man on the left-hand side of your screen now, he has to stay out of trouble. I mean, this is the key to the type of accidents that we've seen today so far at Daytona. The enormous speed that the cars reach around this racetrack, averaging more than 180 miles an hour. If an accident happens or an incident of any kind, even a mechanical happening happens up front of you, you have to be in a position to position your car in such a way as to get round the slowing vehicle. Because when 
when you're doing at a speed of more than 190 miles an hour, you have to smoothly negotiate any trouble that you might run into. And that's what Buddy Baker, the man you're looking at right now, has to do. He's after a first prize of at least $51,700. Lap money can bring that to considerably more. And you see that second place, third place, fourth place are also extremely profitable here. Total money, $457,500 in the annual Daytona 500. So Buddy Baker still in the lead. Second place now is Cale Yarborough. As I said, he was able to pass Bobby Allison. There is Cale Yarborough in car number 11. He was able to pass Bobby Allison when Allison pitted under the green. However, it may be that Yarborough and Baker will have to come in. Now there is Bobby Allison in his car number 15, who is in third place and still on the same lap. Only three cars on the same lap. In fourth place is Ron Hutcherson in car number 53, the teammate of A.J. Foyt and the brother, younger brother of Dick Hutcherson, who was a very skilled NASCAR driver a few years ago. In fifth place is Benny Parsons, who is also only one lap down. So those two cars still bear some watching, Jackie, with the kind of things that have been happening today. Well, you can never leave anything to chance in a race of this kind, but I think the big question now is whether this blue and white car can change the luck of Buddy Baker, can change to bring him back to be a winner, because I think a lot of people had given up the idea of Buddy Baker coming to be a winner, particularly because of his winless year last season. And, of course, Buddy Baker, more than anyone else, must have been in some way questioning his position and his future in motor racing. Even though you know that you've got the basic talent to drive quickly, there's always that rumbling fear, are you ever going to get it together? If you don't get it together now, is your racing career going to come to an end? It's a very difficult situation for any driver, particularly when you're not an old man. Here's a young man, Buddy Baker, whose father, of course, was a great success in the sport also, Buck Baker. Buddy Baker, lead, leading the race, by the way, is in an Oldsmobile. Now, until Cale Yarborough very recently won the first NASCAR race of this season on the road course at Riverside, California, in an Oldsmobile, no Oldsmobile had won a NASCAR race in 20 years. And when was that? It was the very first Daytona 500, won by Lee Petty, the father of Richard Petty, who led this race earlier today. He won in a 59 Oldsmobile. I can almost remember what they looked like. And here it is, 1978, in the 20th Daytona 500, and Olds is back again. When I came to Daytona this week, I looked around the garage area and I saw names like Oldsmobile and I saw the name of Buick. Somehow or other, when I come to America, I expect these cars to be driven by middle-aged, very conservative Republicans. They don't seem to be the type of names that you would expect to be running around a super speedway at Daytona. Maybe some of these drivers are going to be a little conservative from now on. Well, the second place car at the moment, Cale Yarborough, is also an Oldsmobile. And as for Bobby Allison, he is in a fourth. Those are the only three cars still on the same lap. Buddy Baker, the leader, however, and he's a very interesting guy. He's slow talking, but he is not slow thinking. He's quick of mind, a humorous sort of guy, Buddy is, and most of all, very, very big. Let's meet him a little bit. Buddy Baker. Well, Buddy, you're driving a new car, and you had problems in the 125. Crunched it when you ran into oil. What shape is it in now for the 500? Well, Chris, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. Uh, we found rear end housing all bent out of shape this morning. We uh, changed a lot of things on the car. And, you know, it looks good in the garage as far as everything plumbing back up. But uh, you really don't know until you, they drop the green flag and we go off in the first corner. But... Uh, had we not found the rear end housing bent like it was, I'm sure I'd have been out in 15, 20 miles. Buddy, you had consistent poor luck here at Daytona. You, you look as though you're jinxed at this racetrack. Well, it does look that way, but you know, I got uh, burned two or three times at Talladega, and it was in several big crashes there, and then I went, went on to win three straight there. So, you know, uh, I don't think there's such a thing as a jinx track or anything else. I, anybody else would have hit the oil that I hit in 125 miles, they'd have went the same way I did. It just seems that uh, here at Daytona, um, my luck has run a little bad, but I think if it ever goes the other way, as bad in the same direction as it has been bad, I'll be in good shape. Well, we hope it changes for you, buddy. Well, thank you. So far today, that luck has finally changed. That was a disappointed Buddy Baker yesterday after his accident on Friday in the 125-mile qualifying race. Disappointed he, as he was, he could have had no idea, really, of how things might go today. Starting from 31st position in the race, he is now the leader with 43 laps to go. We'll be back. We return live to Daytona. Buddy Baker still safely leading the 20th annual running of the Daytona 500. 
at age 37, possibly on his way to the greatest victory of his racing career in car number 27, a new number for him. For a long time, he had car number 15 on his car. Number 15 is third at the moment, but this year that's driven by Bobby Allison, that number. In second place is number 11, Cale Yarborough. He's had that number for a good long while. Buddy Baker, the leader, another report from the pits, and Chris. I'm, I'm standing in leader Buddy Baker's pit. In six to eight laps, he'll come in for his final pit stop of this race, and it's going to be these men that can win or lose the race for the big man from Charlotte. They're all on the key leave. They want to get him in and out as fast as possible. Back to you, Jim. All right, Chris, and there is the man who'll be coming in very shortly then for his final pit stop, and the timing of that will be important, although he has what looks like a comfortable lead over Cale Yarborough right now. One slip of the jack, one mistake by a member of the pit crew could make the difference. Well, of course, you're depending so much on your pit crew here at Daytona, and these NASCAR pit crews have really become very famous for their talents. People like the Wood Brothers who look after the car that is normally driven by David Pearson. The Petty crew is very famous also. And they could become very famous today, the crew of Buddy Baker. If they do something wrong, they will certainly become very infamous. And there's Cale Yarbrough into the pits, the man who's leading this year's NASCAR championship points and has been the winner of that same championship for the last two years. He's got, a do, he's got a very good experienced pit. You've got Junior Johnson, a great stock car racing driver. He's the car owner. He's the man who masterminds the whole effort. A little slow out of the pits goes number 11, Cale Yarbrough, as he accelerates down pit lane. All right, there is Cale Yarbrough in car number 11. We have another late report from an official at Halifax Hospital. They say that uh, A.J. Foyt is still being x-rayed and has been placed in the concentrated care unit. However, we would repeat that uh, Chris Economaki reported from the pits that his information was that A.J. was going to be okay, that these injuries were not going to be serious. Just the latest word we have. That's true, what you see on your screen, that Cale Yarborough won his second consecutive Grand National title in NASCAR in 1977. No one has ever won three in a row. That's one of his aims for this year. But also his aim would be to win his third Daytona 500. Only one man has won more of these races than Cale Yarbrough has, and that was Richard Petty, who's won five. Cale has won two and is aiming for three. Buddy Baker has never won this race. Never, never at all. And he's never made any secret of, uh, in which he is very similar to most of the NASCAR drivers. Never made any secret of the fact that this is it. This is his goal for a lifetime. Allison is second now. Remember Yarbrough, you saw him coming out after a pit stop, and Yarbrough is third. Hutchison fourth is a lap down. Benny Parsons fifth is also a lap down in the race. Standing by for the scheduled pit stop coming up of Buddy Baker, the leader. What do you foresee? Is there anything you can foresee that could change this situation aside from something unexpected, Jackie? Right now, I don't anticipate any big change, but of course, in stock car racing or in any kind of motor racing, as being a driver, I've always been prepared that anything can happen. The smile on Buddy Baker's face right now, as you see him going around this high banked oval here, is fine, but that smile could be wiped off very quickly, just in a split second. Remember, of all the thousands, almost millions of moving parts that's going on inside the shell of that racing car right now, every one of them, they are the things that Buddy Baker's depending on. Not only the men who are down there waiting for him to come in for fuel and tires, but all these little parts, ball races and everything else. And that's Buddy Baker's dependence. He's got to wait for all of those things to last. 500 miles is a long way, particularly when you're getting the stresses and strains that these mechanical parts are going through right now. Laughing at incredible speeds, well over 177 miles an hour, getting up to speeds of 190 down the street. Okay, let's take a look at uh, Cale Yarbrough out there, see how he's doing. Cale st still in good shape, except for himself. He's not in the lead. He's in third place now after that pit stop. Cale Yarbrough last year, as we said, won the NASCAR, NASCAR National Championship. We might take a look at the finish of last year's Daytona 500 in which Cale Yarbrough, of course, was very intimately involved. Let's go back on videotape. All right, they're the only two cars on the same lap, remember, Yarborough and Parsons. In third place is Buddy Baker, one lap down, Cuckoo Marlin in fourth place, two laps down, and Dick Brooks in fifth place, two laps down. Coming for the white flag, which means one lap to go. It's being held, furled, and now it's out. There it is. One lap to go, and 
It certainly doesn't look as if Benny Parsons is close enough. Unless he, he's got some extra RPMs he hasn't used. He can't do it. He can't do it. I don't believe he can do it. Unless something happens to, to kill Yarbrough, I don't believe there's any opportunity for him to get there at all. There's the relationship. You can see it's wide open there. It's, of course, just fractions of seconds in a way, but it's too far on the racetrack. This is a, a big racetrack to cover, but I'm afraid they can't do it. It's two and a half miles long. But they're now going into turn three. He's already in it. Cale Yarbrough's high in the banking there. There's no way that Benny Parsons can catch him now. Well, what a beginning for the year 1977 it'll be for William Caleb Yarbrough of Timmonsville, South Carolina. He won the NASCAR season-long championship last year. And now he wins the Daytona 500 at age 37 for the second time, nine years after his initial victory here. Well, that was last year when Cale Yarbrough won his second Daytona 500, the personable race driver from Timmonsville, South Carolina. His first 500 victory had come more than a decade before. Now he's in third place and also on that last pit stop, he lost a lap and that's vitally important to him. He is now one lap down to the two leaders, Buddy Baker and Bobby Allison. So it's the two men who started in 31st and 33rd position on the starting grid who are now the only people in the same lap in the race. The race goes on, we'll be back live. We're back live at Daytona and we have a new leader in the race. Bobby Allison has just taken the lead from, uh, from Buddy Baker, but remember this, and this is a big if. Bobby Allison has not yet made his last pit stop. He must make another one. Buddy Baker just came out of his last pit stop under the green flag, and that is why he lost the lead. However, we would expect that to be temporary. Let's take a look on videotape at the pit stop just made by Buddy Baker. Remember, he had a comfortable lead in this race, and then in he came, Jackie. He comes into the pit lane here. He's coming in fast because his pit is, in fact, quite a long way down pit lane. Oh, two-thirds way down pit lane, so his entry speed is very high, but he's got to be very careful that he doesn't overrun his pit. A lot of nervousness. He's got to do it very accurately. They're putting in fuel, and at this time, they're also changing inside rubber. That's to say they're changing two tires on one side of the car, the left-hand side of the car. You can see the clock at the bottom of the screen timing this very important pit stop for Buddy Baker. One of those mechanics makes an error now. It could mean the end of this victory race for him as he stands to win the Daytona 500. He leaves in 18.9 seconds as he goes back onto the racetrack. And we're back live here at Daytona. So it is Bobby Allison, the leader in the race with Buddy Baker second. As, or no, now Buddy Baker, excuse me, has just moved back in front of Allison again. That is very important. Uh, but that is the way they stand. There's no laps between them. They stand exactly that way. Now, should there be a yellow flag for any reason, Allison would be able to make his pit stop, get back out, close up on Buddy Baker, and the finish could be extremely close. Certainly a yellow flag would be a great help right now, of course, to Allison, but it would also be a help to Buddy Baker. Now, I think Allison could pick up perhaps about three seconds in this pit stop because an 18.9 second pit stop is not a particularly fast one. We can certainly see them getting out in 15 seconds, which would certainly help him a great deal. It's not going to help him as much as he would like, but of course one yellow flag here at Daytona could change the whole face of this competition. And remember, but Bobby Allison hasn't had the best of luck over the last few years also. You're looking at two men right now who have been faced with a great deal of luck in a way, good fortune today, by virtue that some of the really front runners have been eliminated by accidents and problems, and therefore those two now find themselves in a one-two position. So it'll be interesting to see if these two sort of hard luck drivers of the last few seasons can regain some of their confidence by the success that they might achieve today. Okay, so the situation is, remember, that Baker is the leader in the race, but by a very narrow margin. Still, Allison must make the pit stop, even if it is a fast one, under the green, it will cost him a lot of seconds, and Baker will have his comfortable lead back again. If the yellow flag should come out, Allison would be able to almost maintain position with Buddy. Kerry Yarborough, by the way, is back on the same lap, and that's important. The action continues live at Daytona. Buddy Baker still leads the Daytona 500 with not too many laps to go, less than 70 miles to go in the race now. Bobby Allison is second, Kerry Yarbrough is third, all those cars on the same lap. One lap down, Benny Parsons and Ron Hutcherson. We continue to try to get reports on the condition of A.J. Boyd, who was injured in an accident here earlier today. He's been taken to Halifax Hospital. The last word we had was that this man, four-time winner of Indianapolis, was in the concentrated care unit, still undergoing x-rays, and conscious but in a confused state. We have a videotape report now from the ambulance director of the Speedway, 
Bill Honeycutt. Here then is our ABC Sports report on that. He was brought into the uh, infield care center. He was conscious. Uh, we did uh, stabilize him at the care center, transport him to Halifax Hospital in Daytona Beach. He was conscious. He talked to us all the way over. He is in real good condition. Uh, they are going to keep him over now for observation. Okay, the words of Bill Honeycutt about A.J. Foyt here. Remember, once again, since that was videotaped, a report from the hospital is x-rays being taken, concentrated care unit. That's the only official word that we have. It truly is a remarkable thing, television, when you consider that was a live report from the hospital by ABC Sports. This hospital is some distance from the racetrack itself, but it really is amazing what the new electronic age can do. Okay, not exactly live, videotaped just a little while ago on our ENG unit. However, we now have Buddy Baker. We have the into the pits. Buddy Baker. We have the leader into the pits. He's already pitted. This is an unscheduled pit stop. And it's under the green and he's changing inside rubber again. There's something very strange happening here with Buddy Baker. Has Lady Luck deserted him again? Bobby Allison is the leader in the race. That stop took 18.8 seconds. Just suddenly, out of nowhere, the way things have happened all day today. You've never seen anything develop. You've never seen the problem begin. It just has happened suddenly. What do you think is the story? Tire problems, I it guess. It could be another tire problem for him. You never know. It could be that he wasn't comfortable, that he felt a change in the car, that he wasn't handling quite as well as he had been before. And, of course, the, with the sort of incidents that have been happening today, the confidence of a driver is very important. It could be well that he came in and said, let's change them once again. But one never knows. All right. The leader of the race, then, at age 41, is Bobby Allison of the Racing Allison Brothers of Hueytown, Alabama. His brother, Donnie, was much better positioned on the starting grid than he was today, but Donnie dropped out in the early going. Bobby, who started in 33rd position of the 41 cars that started the race, is now the leader all by himself. Ironically, driving the car that uh, Buddy Baker drove last year, at least for that team. And there he is, high in this banking here, as he comes off the banking in turn four, heading for this dog leg, this amazing racetrack in Daytona. And this must be amazing to Bobby Allison right now. Passes the wounded car of Darrell Waltrip, the car that was involved in the accident earlier, along with Richard Petty, and of course the car of David Pierce. But there you see the leader, very low on the racetrack as he goes into this 31 degree banking. Then he goes right up to the wall and starts to come down again, using a peculiar line round here as he gets into this long 30, well, 3,000 foot backstretch. Could he possibly be running out of fuel? He still has a pit stop to make. No, he certainly uh, has a fuel stop to make. Perhaps he's coaxing it on, hoping for a yellow flag. But right now, he's driving in a peculiar line round here. I haven't seen a car diamond a, a banked corner, as they call it technically in this sport, where you come from the bottom of the racetrack, you go to the top of it, and then you come back down again. It isn't normal because of the banking, and it's 18 degrees of banking in this this dog leg in the tri-oval that he's on right now generally to use that banking to go consistently around the race track at the same height of, from the wall but that is not what bobby allison is doing as you can see all right well bobby uh, jackie we have another report from the baker pits that his pit stop was due to a cut left rear tire and that's at least the third confirmed report today of cut tires where are these bits of debris coming from I'm sure they're coming from the fact that they have had torrential rain on this racetrack. There's been a lot of movement around the racetrack from the infield onto the racetrack. And I'm sure that could be it. And there is Cale Yarborough low in your, your race screen there as we can see these two cars coming around here side by side. They are racing for position in the race as we have it now. Cale got back on the same lap so he should be just that far behind Buddy as of the moment. This could be a real three car finish. Uh, no, now we get the word that Kale has just been lapped again. By, by Buddy passing him, he is now one lap behind. However, presuming that Bobby Allison has to make this final pit stop, the time he loses in the pits could just about make up the difference by which he leads Buddy Baker now. It's going to be a close finish, whatever happens. And remember this, we are anticipating that there may be no more yellows. If there were to be another yellow, of course, this would change the whole thing again. And that is why it's enormously important for car number 11, Cale Yarbrough, to get ahead once more of Buddy Baker. Enormously important for him at this time. Okay, the lead at the moment is 38 seconds, but by the time a car decelerates into the pits, has the pit stop, then accelerates again, again, that could be made up. We'll be right back after this commercial message and a word from your local station. Well, Bobby Allison just made, just made his lap.
All right, Bobby Allison has made a pit stop. And the question is, can Buddy Baker catch him before he gets back up to speed again? There is Allison out on the racetrack. And Buddy Baker is in pursuit, but still a matter of a couple hundred yards behind him. There is, there is Baker. Let's follow Buddy Baker as he tries to catch Bobby Allison. This is real automobile racing in the closing phases live of the Daytona 500, the 20th annual. All right, he still has a way to go before he catches Bobby Allison, but we'll keep an eye on him. Here was the pit stop just a few seconds ago on videotape, and it was a good one. All right, Jackie, there, this was it. Well, he really locked up coming in. He nearly got tangled with another car there. You can see the clock is running. Now, he really did get tangled with that car. He locked the rear brakes as he came in, slid it into the pit lane itself very accurately, and off he did 12.5 seconds, very fast as we can see. And now down to Chris Economaki in the pits. Well, Bobby Allison was just in, and he made a pit stop, and it was an exact duplicate of the one Buddy Baker made. The routine where they got inside tires, fuel, and a windshield clean. But the Bud Moore crew was much faster than the David If crew, and this is what sets up this great finish we're about to see. Back to you, Jim. All right, Chris, there are 18 laps to go in this race around this two-and-a-half-mile racetrack. Not very much out of 500 miles. 500 miles of always exciting, often spectacular, and sometimes very dangerous and scary racing. However, as of now, it appears that no one is seriously injured, although A.J. Foyt is still undergoing x-rays. And they are very close together. Buddy Baker has just one car between him and Bobby Allison right now. It looks like they've, they've both completed their pit stops. They could race this way to the end. There is Allison in the lead, number 15, and one car in between, and then Buddy Baker. Well, this is very close indeed. This is going to be one wing-dang finish. I can be sure of that. You're going to see a typical Daytona finish. This is the kind of finish that we're expecting here always, of course. Car number 72 there trying to unlap himself is Benny Parsons, a man who knows how to finish here in Daytona. And you know, Benny Parsons, I believe, has just gotten himself back on the same lap with the leader. Scoreboard's still showing him one behind, but I think perhaps he's on the same lap. That could prove to be important should there be a yellow flag. But the big battle is right here. It is Bobby Allison and Buddy Baker, two hard luck racers for the last couple of years. Two men who have come close before in this race, but have never won it, apparently going to fight it out to the finish. Lurking some distance behind them, but definitely on the same lap, Cale Yarborough in car number 11, the defending champion. And all it will take right now is one yellow flag for someone to drop a little bit of oil for another car to spin. Any kind of incident that would bring out a yellow flag or the pace car could bring that man, Benny Parsons, right up behind the field and certainly allow Cale Yarborough to come right up behind the two cars that you're looking at, number two and three in the screen right now. And now, Jackie, the scoreboard agrees with us. They have now put Benny Parsons on the same lap with the leaders. So that's significant. We now have four cars on the same lap. We have Bobby Allison and Buddy Baker fighting for the lead. Some distance back, Cale Yarborough, and a lot further back, in fact, just ahead of the leader, Bobby Allison, we have Benny Parsons, but he's on the same lap, and the yellow flag could help him close up. And, of course, that's the strategy that he's working right now. There is an NASCAR rule that's quite interesting to look at. If a yellow flag comes on, they have to go right around the racetrack, and they can pass until they get to the start finishing line. So right now, the big thing for him to do is if a yellow flag were to come out, he would have to, one way or another, keep Bobby Allison and Buddy Baker behind him come hang or high water. All right, <laughs> hang or high water, all right. <laughs> Benny Parsons is the lead car that you see, but remember he is almost one lap behind the leaders. Drafting on him is the race leader, Bobby Allison, and in back of him, the second place car of Buddy Baker. Bobby Allison has been around a long time. The first time he came out on the circuit was in 1961, 17 years ago. And there you see a lot of movement in there. Look at the Whoa. movement that you've just seen amongst that traffic. What a way. Buddy Baker charged up. In He's taking the lead. Yes, he just charged up in that traffic there, Jim. Got past Bobby Allison. It was a question of reading the traffic lanes and really taking full advantage of them. And there you see, he's going to try and make a move on Benny Parsons now. He's using traffic. He's got Ty Scott, and he unlapped. He puts Benny Parsons back again, a lap behind him. He really has worked that traffic well. A virtuoso bit of driving by a man who many people have accused of being a charger and nothing more. That certainly was not just a charger. Well, it was a charge with a little bit of intelligence mixed into it right, right. now. It was a man of great uh, determination that was wanting to do that, but certainly he did it with caution. 
13 laps to go. 13 laps left in the Daytona 500, and Buddy Baker determinedly and skillfully has again taken the lead. This is all live. There are less than 12 laps to go as we come to you live from the Daytona International Speedway. Jim McKay with Jackie Stewart and Chris Akatamaki. And look at this, a battle for the lead between Buddy Baker in car number 27 and Bobby Allison in car number 15. Baker retook the lead just a couple of minutes ago, if you were with us, by skillful maneuvers in traffic after he had trailed Allison after their final pit stops. It's been an incredible day of racing here. The first 60 laps were totally accident or incident free. Uh, the longest period that had ever been experienced here without a yellow flag. Then suddenly things began to happen with Richard Petty leaving the race. He was involved in a crash with the second and third place cars of Darrell Waltrip and David Pearson. Later, there was an accident involving A.J. Foyt. Now we've got a yellow. We've got a yellow, and that's going to enable the other two cars of Carey Yarborough and Benny Parsons to close up here. Although, again, the scoreboard is showing Parsons one lap down. I think he was just passed again. Tough luck for Benny because being a lap down will make all the difference. But Carey Yarborough is now on the same lap, and here's that racing to the finish line. Under the NASCAR, under the NASCAR rule, and it's Bobby Allison getting in front of Buddy Baker. Remember, they've, got, it, they've got to come back to the finishing lane before they can get that yellow officially, and I'm not allowed to pass. And look at that. It was so close as they came to that Who was ahead? You, you, I think at that time it ahead was still Bobby Allison was ahead as he got there. But this was be. the race to the, and here you see in slow motion. The Very important. On the Who bottom was? side of the screen there is Bobby Allison, and the high side of the screen is Buddy Baker, and he just gets across Bobby Allison before that yellow flag became official. Because even though the yellow flag came out, even though the yellow lights were flashing, and you see those yellow lights now, they flash all around the racetrack. Even though the drivers see those, they have to get back to the start finishing line before that yellow becomes operative. And the rule of the yellow flag is that you're not allowed to overtake another car during that yellow flag being out. But of course, it only becomes operative after the start finishing line. In other words, the difference between Bobby Allison and Buddy Baker as they went across the start finish line there, a matter of a couple of feet, could be the determining factor in this race because should the race finish under the yellow, and there are less than 10 laps to go, Obviously, Bobby Allison would be the leader because he's in the lead, but only by the amount by which he led Buddy Baker when they came across the start-finish line. Uh, now, Cale Yarborough will be closing up under the yellow in car number 11, so his hopes of winning this race increase. Of course, the green must come out for him to do that. But the reason for the yellow is not apparent, except that there's a car down in the dirt uh, up on turn one or two. Is it turn, turn one? Yeah. But remember, of course, that Cale Yarbrough in third place is now being able to close right up in the leading duel, and that means that he can catch all the racetrack right up. So therefore, he can achieve that, and this is a great break for Cale Yarbrough. Excuse me, Jackie. They say we're going to get, the, yes, one finger. They're going to get the green flag in one lap. The debris is cleared from the track. Uh, Cale Yarbrough probably will not be able to get close enough, although we'll keep an eye on him, but it's going to be a sprint to the finish with nine laps to go. What a finish this is going to be. Typical Daytona 500. We've seen it before. We've seen it for years now. And this is what's going to happen. You're going to see these two young, well, two experienced drivers, but luckless drivers over the last two years. You've got the lead car there, car number 15. Bobby Allison, car number 27 is in the second place. Big Buddy Baker. And now you're going to see, closing up on them, hopefully, you're going to see Cale Yarbrough in car number 11. That well could be a really strong three-way fight to the finish here. There's been a suggestion that Cale Yarbrough's car has lost a little bit of its power, has lost the edge of its performance, but let's wait and see. If you're wondering where drivers like Richard Petty and David Pearson and Darrell Waltrip and A.J. Foyt are, all of them were involved in crashes earlier in the day. A.J. is still undergoing x-rays in Halifax Hospital. Three cars on the same lap. Bobby Allison and Buddy Baker and Carol Yarborough, those are the only ones with an apparent chance to win the race. The pace car off the track. The green flag is out. They're racing again at Daytona. And it is Bobby Allison and Buddy Baker on the front. Carol Yarborough is too far back, it appears, at this point to make it. He's got about a half a dozen cars between him and Allison and Baker. But it's Allison and Baker with less than eight laps to go in the race now. It's going to be a trophy dash. Now you're going to see the tactics. Now you're going to see how these drivers are going to think. And you're going to see these cars using different lanes, trying to find the right place to be in with the, with the lap or the last lap to go. 
Buddy Baker has gotten the lead again now. He got past Bobby Allison on the restart. So it is Baker in the lead now, and Allison second. And of course, now you're gonna see what drafting is all about, what slipstreaming is all about. Right now, they're not slipstreaming. And there you see Dave Marcus, car number two there. He's not in this race right now, as far as the lead is concerned, but he's taken the lead on the racetrack. And he's certainly a factor in what could happen in the race. And now, we have seven laps to go, seven laps to go to the finish line. It's the two blue and white cars of Buddy Baker, number 27 and down low. Bobby Allison going for the lead again. And he picked up the draft, in fact, of Dave Marcus, who's in front of him. That's why you saw that sudden, it seemed, acceleration. That car of Dave Marcus was breaking the air, and therefore Bobby Allison, the car number 15, took advantage of that and slipped past without any trouble. Now, there he goes, out on the racetrack on his own. You've got the leader there, car number 15. Bobby Allison leading the Daytona 500. And he's taking a little bit of a lead over Buddy Baker now. Baker, is he still in the draft, do you think? Oh, it looks like he's close enough to be in it now. Oh, he's yep. strong in the yep. draft. You'll see, in fact, he'll close up quite markedly down this dog leg, this 18 degree banking that they're going down now, heading for turn one, and the 31 degree banking of this turn one and turn two. He's really tight in already. Look how much time he's grown. Six, less than six laps to go. We were scheduled for a commercial here. We'll tell our people in control. We're not going to take it right now. The racing is too important, too exciting. This is the reason we came here today. We've been here for going on three and a half hours since the start of this race. It's been, uh, well, well over an hour now since we came on the air live. And, of course, earlier than that, during Superstars or most of these stations, we were on with live reports. And there is Marcus again getting in between. I thought I saw Buddy Baker shaking yes. his fist there at, 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 at Buddy at, Baker slowed down. Yeah, he's up high on the banking. Buddy Baker may be in trouble there, and look at him in traffic. He could easily be involved in that. It seemed to be very strange. Buddy Baker seemed to raise his hand. He's blown an engine. Smoke comes out of. He's. Oh, oh, what a bad bit of luck. Buddy Baker's engine has blown right in the front stretch here. A lot of smoke coming out of the car there. Buddy as Baker. Has, as has happened to Buddy so many times in the past. Lady Luck simply has not been with him on this racetrack ever since he came here in the early 1960s. Here he has been leading much of the way for the last 200 miles, and now it's all going to be over again. Where he's placed in the race makes no difference to him as long as it isn't first, and it isn't going to be first today. Bobby Allison has retaken the lead and is the apparent winner. One car still in the same lap with Allison, however, is Cale Yarbrough, but he is not close to him. There will be four laps to go when they get to the start-finish line the next time. Well, that incident for me started to happen on the back straight. I saw the hand of Buddy Baker going in the air, the frustration. He almost slammed it down on the steering wheel, and he knew then that that was the end of his day. Well, perhaps it was simply fate that he was shaking his fist at, not another driver then. No, I'm sure it was fate. I'm sure it was annoyance that he knew his engine had blown. I thought he was shaking and making motions towards that other driver in car number two, but that was not the case. There you had the race leader, Bobby Allison, simply drafting on a car that is not in contention, number two of Dave Marcus, but a fast car, a good race car, one that can go at the speeds that Allison would still like to, uh, to keep up. And in fact, an advantage to Bobby Allison at this time to have a car to draft, to be able to slipstream, to be able to still get around this racetrack quickly. And of course, it helps both cars when there is a draft taking place like that. Ironically, Jim, Bobby Allison is driving the car that Buddy Baker just left. The team that Buddy Baker left at the end of last season the car that is now winning that ra this race right now is that very same team okay carol yarborough is in second place he's not in your picture that isn't what the superimposition means it simply means he's second in the race bobby allison number 15 is the leader dave marcus is one of the back markers in the race but he is being used by the leader there is carol yarborough uh, a good distance behind. Here you can see the relationship between Kale there all the way across the racetrack here, coming up to the race leader, uh, Bobby Allison. When we say a long way, uh, again, uh, a t the problem with the tire, problem with an engine, still could make the difference with a little more than two laps to go. He's about 2,500 feet, in fact, almost the length of the back stretch behind the lead car. Anything, of course, can happen, as we've seen here in Daytona, but that certainly is becoming less true. And in fact, forlornly into the pit lane now comes Buddy Baker driving very slowly, as we from our commentary position can see this, and what must be going through this poor man's head right now. When Bobby Allison comes to the start-finish line, the next time he will get the white flag. He has never seen that before for himself as the race leader in the Daytona 500. 
One more lap after the white flag, and he will, after such a long and at often times a frustrating career, have won the greatest of all stock car races, the Daytona 500. The skies are cloudy here today, overcast. We've had rain, rain, and more rain all through the week, and yet all of the races have been gotten in one way or another, and you can be sure that the sun will appear to shine for Bobby Allison if he gets in that, well, a little more than one more lap. Now coming to the start-finish line, there's the white flag. One more time around, and Bobby Allison will have won the race. His brother Donnie, somewhere in the pit, you can be sure, is exulting with him. Buddy Baker, nothing but heartbreak for him as his car is in the pits, and for so many others today, for Richard Petty, who was after his sixth, but as, after leading the race, was involved in an accident in the fairly early going at the 150-mile mark. Heartbreak for David Pearson here today, and for Darrell Waltrip, all of whom were up there for the lead, for A.J. Foyt, who is still in the hospital, Back on the lead, it is Bobby Allison readying himself for the checkered flag. You saw Cale Yarbrough, number 11, in second place, a full length of the straightaway behind Allison. In third place now is Ron Hutcherson, a lap down. In fourth place, Benny Parsons, also a lap down. In fifth place, Dick Brooks, two laps down. The checkered flag will be coming out for Allison before a crowd of more than 100,000 people, and that's it. It's all over. After an exhausting, traumatic day of motor racing here at Daytona, Bobby Allison has won the Daytona 500. Here is Cale Yarbrough, the defending champion and the current NASCAR national season-long champion coming in for second place. Those are the only two cars to finish on the same lap. Again, third place, one lap down, Ron Hutcherson, the teammate of A.J. Foyt, then uh, Benny Parsons in 72, Dick Brooks, number 90. There's more to come here, so stay with us and we'll be back. 500, and incidentally, for the first time since 1959, that is a Ford Thunderbird which surrounds him at this moment. Not since 59 has the Thunderbird won a NASCAR race. They won six in that year. That was the only year that they won any races on the circuit. A Thund Thunderbird had never before won the Daytona 500. So again, the winner, Allison, second place, Cale Yarbrough for third place. That was virtually a photo finish. In fact, that's what they're calling it right now. They haven't really decided to, between two cars that were a lap down, Ron Hutcherson and Benny Parsons, another former winner of this race. Allison, however, is not a former winner. It's the first time for him in the climax of his racing career. Absolutely incredible race. What a finish we always seem to get in these stock car racing. There's no other kind of racing in the world that I think blows in the excitement and the presence of this. And look at this car here, soiled by the oil of others as it comes towards victory circle. It must be a happy man who's ended luck. Okay, Chris, are you down there? Can you get well, through? Yeah, victory lane. Let's just bend down a little bit and take a look at the front of Allison's car. All right, we before see you. He gets out. Okay. He's, uh, this is a kind of... Uh, damage it's done to these machines the paint is all pitted oil streak look at his windshield i don't know how anybody could see out of that windshield to drive a car let alone win a 500 mile race in it and bobby allison is getting a drink he's totally exhausted he'll be out getting out of that car in a matter of minutes down here and uh, it, it, ironic is the fact that this nars ford was buddy baker's ride through the end of last season as change of teams for baker he wanted what he said was a better ride for 1978 and he switched to the MC Anderson Oldsmobile. Bobby Allison moved out of his own car to this ride, and now it's a winning combination here at the Daytona International Speedway. Allison has been trying to win this race for a great number of years. And here he comes out of the car. We're gonna try and get a get a word with him now. Hey, oh, that's the way to smile. Bobby, how long has it been you've been trying here? Boy, I'll tell you, I've come here before I ever went to any other NASCAR track and I've never won a major race till now, and I'm just so tickled that Mr. Norris gave me the opportunity to do this, and of course, Bud Moore. We had all kinds of trouble all day, and I, when I got in the wall over there with Ron Hutchinson, I thought the day was over, but uh, it, things turned around and really went right for us. And soaking wet, I got my hand on your back, and you're dripping wet. What was it like in the car? Well, it really wasn't bad. The car just drove perfectly all day, and uh, you know, I was just tickled with the Norris Thunderbird out in California, and we had engine trouble uh, early, so we couldn't show how good the car drove. It drove like a million dollars today. I, when the track started to tear up in three and four, I could go below the hole or above it. I didn't have to hit the hole, and that's what was giving the other guys a lot of trouble. Bobby, you and Buddy had your troubles in the qualifying race, and here it came down to two cars that were badly banged up a few days ago to come down for the lead. Did you see uh, Buddy blow? No, I didn't see him blow. I saw that Marcus was really running good in the bottom, 
and I just made the choice to draft him, and I couldn't tell who was who behind me. But I could see that whoever was back there was losing ground as long as I stayed with Dave. And I got to tell him thanks a lot for helping the Norris Thunderbird win this race. What'd you think uh, when you went by Baker there? Well, I knew that he was having his hands full in the corners anyway. I didn't know that he was having engine trouble, but uh, I knew that he was having handling troubles, and I thought that uh, maybe that would be our strong suit. The car did run perfectly all day. I got to give a, just a tremendous amount of credit to Bud Moore and all the crew. I wrecked the car on Thursday, as you know, and uh, they've rebuilt it. And uh, we suffered through a lot of problems today, and they just kept right on going, and here we are. Well, Bobby, if you weren't out of breath from winning the 500, you're out of breath from a Victory Lane interview. Winner Bobby Allison here, and it's for, the, for Allison the thrill of victory, and for Buddy Baker the agony of defeat. Back to you, Jim. No question about that, Chris. And mentioning that, Wide World of Sports will be following this race over most of these ABC stations. Bobby Allison is... 41 years old, as we said. He first came out on the circuit in 1961. He didn't have a win for his first three years on the circuit. And after that, it has come very, very slowly to him. His best year, 1971, he won 10 races, did the same thing in 72, then dropped off, then had good years in 75 and 76, uh, but not again last year. He didn't win a race. Now, uh, again, if you joined us late, remember that Richard Petty led the race for a while, was involved in an accident with Darrell Waltrip, and uh, with David Pearson, all of them out of the race, A.J. Foyt is in the ho hospital after an accident. Is there, if there's any further report on A.J.'s condition, we will be bringing it to you during ABC's Wide World of Sports, which, as I said, follows immediately over most of these stations. Our assistants in the booth and very capable ones today were Jay Milligan and an old friend and colleague, Dick Kirchner. We're going to take a commercial, and then we will be r right back again at Daytona. Frank Gifford, back in our studio in New York, a very exciting Daytona 500. We'll be going back down to Daytona in just a few moments. We'd like to keep you up to date on what's going on in pro basketball this afternoon. Washington playing without Phil Chenier and Mitch Kupchak beat New Orleans minus Pete Maravich, 130 to 111. High man for Washington was Elvin Hayes. He had 31 points. Bobby Dandridge had 22 for the winners. And out in Denver, the Nuggets high scoring trio of David Thompson, Dan Issel, and Bobby Jones combined for 80 points as Denver beat Boston 118 to 115. John Havlicek had 23 points for Boston, but he fouled out in the final quarter. Boston also in trouble, playing without Dave Cowens, JoJo White, and Curtis Rowe, they're all hurt. Elsewhere in the NBA at Philadelphia, the 76ers outscored New Jersey 120 to 110, and it was Detroit over Kansas City 110 to 107, while Seattle beat Milwaukee 108 to 103. Well, coming up at 5.30 Eastern, 4.30 Central, except on the West Coast, It'll be the Glenn Campbell L.A. Open Golf Championship and a very tightly bunched field after three rounds. But one of the great names was not there. Arnold Palmer was playing down in Australia, and this afternoon he was beaten in the $55,000 Victorian Open in Melbourne. But the winner, Guy Wollstenholme, needed three extra holes before he could put Arnie away. The Englishman who lives in Australia tied Palmer with a 25-foot birdie on the final regulation hole. And then one when Palmer bogeyed the third extra hole, Wollstenholme parring it. This, of course, the second time Walston Holm has won this event in sudden death. He beat Australian Graham Marsh two years ago on the second extra hole. Well, as we said before, the Daytona 500, a thriller all the way, a lot of twisted machinery, and a very happy Bobby Allison. Okay, let's go back to Jim McKay. Bobby Allison started the Daytona 500 today in 33rd position on the starting grid out of a field of 41 cars. He had to pass one car after another. Danger in every pass going through traffic all the way. He worked his way up to the top 10, then saw attrition begin to set in on the leaders, on people like Richard Petty and Darrell Waltrip and David Pearson. He saw A.J. Foyt flip on the roof of his car and be taken to the hospital. He saw many incidents out there today, and finally he saw Buddy Baker tantalizingly in front of him with victory in sight, and suddenly the break that that never come to Bobby Allison on this racetrack in his lifetime came. Buddy Baker's engine blew. Allison passed him and went on to victory. Cale Yarbrough, the defending champion, finished second. There's still that photo finish for third between Ron Hutcherson and Benny Parsons. 24 cars of the original 41 finished the race. The average speed was 159.736 miles per hour. The time, three hours, seven minutes, and eight seconds. And can you imagine Jackie, he hasn't started, hasn't happened many times, I'm sure, in any field of racing where a man started in 33rd position and won the race. 
certainly a record here at uh, Daytona. It has never happened before, and I don't expect it'll happen for a very long time to be able to come from that far back in the grid, to come through the sort of traffic and the incidents, as you've pointed out, takes, of course, a great deal of experience. And this is what Bobby Allison has, a great deal of knowledge and experience, the sort of person who you would expect to be able to thread the, the needle, so to speak. Won't be too long, Jackie, till we'll be picking up the USAC, the U.S. Auto Club trail, out in Ontario, California, to see their season begin. Boy, it's going to be quite a year. Look at that. Still a photo finish for third. <laughs> we'll be back. Captain Mike Fitzpatrick is piloting the Goodyear Blimp Mayflower high over the Daytona International Speedway, and there you get a very good idea of how many people came here today. In the infield surrounding that lake, there are thousands of campers and vans and automobiles, tens of thousands of people. In the grandstand itself, more than 70,000 people. They added 5,000 new seats on turn three last year. Those were all occupied again today. As we said, no official, official attendance is given out. Now, not even a semi-official estimate has come to us so far today, but it's believed to be well over 100,000, could be as much as 120 or 130,000 people. The story, once again, Bobby Allison coming from 33rd position to win the 20th Daytona 500. And Bobby, or Jack, Bobby isn't here, but Jackie is still here, and I'm getting pretty tired. How about you? Well, it's been a long day, and for those people also in this enormous racetrack, 450 acres of it we're looking right now that, that carries this great Daytona racetrack. It has been a tiring day, but for the drivers it must be tiring too. And I, from a racing driver's point of view, would wish to send every luck to A.J. Foyt, send them best wishes from all of us here in ABC Sports, from I'm sure all of the fans that know him around the world, and I'm sure he's in good hands, and we're going to see A.J. Foyt in very short time. There is A.J. Foyt, the four-time winner of the Indianapolis 500. Should there be a further report on his condition in the next hour or two, we will give that to you on ABC's Wide World of Sports over most of these stations. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. Today's coverage of the Daytona 500 was produced by Chet Forty and directed by Larry Cam. Our technical director, Bill Morris, and our associate producer, Rick LaCivita. Our associate directors, Norm Samet and Jeff Cohan. For now, this is Jim McKay, along with Jackie Stewart and Chrissy Konomaki, saying so long from Daytona International Speedway. Coming up next, ABC's Wide World of Sports, featuring National Ice Dancing Championship, the Mr. Olympia Contest, and the World 30-Kilometer Cross-Country Skiing Championship. The Daytona 500 has been brought to you by Fram, makers of oil, air, and fuel filters, windshield wipers, and Autolite spark plugs and tune-up kits. By Yamaha Motorcycles, featuring the ultimate in Yamaha four-stroke technology, the remarkable new XS11 Yamaha, when you know how they're built. The blimp was provided to us by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United built the largest airline in the free world around you. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Again, the winner, Bobby Allison. <laughs>